Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 18th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week I mentioned the vulnerability in the Snappy Packet Manager that is distributed by Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu. And of course it is used by Ubuntu, but the listener pointed out that yes, it's used by other distributions too. You can install it pretty much on any distribution you choose to. Now patches are now available, not just for Ubuntu, but also for other distributions. So double check and make sure that you applied this patch. And in the show notes, you will find a link to the Ubuntu page that has references to patches for different distributions. And for all the reverse engineers out there, based on some reader feedback, DDE updated his famous Oli dump tool in order to also find PowerShell commands hidden in a property alternative text. So if you're interested in this, uh, over the weekend, uh, DDE published a diary explaining how this works and also a video with a little walkthrough through this latest version of his tool. And the Salesforce team is at it again with releasing some pretty neat security tools. The latest one that they released uh, was Pro Sysmon, and they now have a nice blog post how to set it all up and how to also integrate it with their SSL fingerprinting libraries like JA3. Now, what Pro Sysmon really does is it uses data from Sysmon. Sysmon is an add-on tool for Windows that you can use to, for example, monitor outbound network connections, among other things. And the way sort of a Pro or Seek feeds in there is that it would be nice to know which particular program on a Windows host did establish a connection. So what you can do with pro sysmon is that whenever sysmon reports that a process on a windows host establishes a connection to a certain ip address to a certain port pro sysmon will report this activity to seek and of course then you have all the power of seek to correlate these sysmon events with other network events that you have like for example ja3 fingerprints that will then also confirm whether or not for example this particular software that calls itself explorer or edge or whatever is actually that software based on the JE3 fingerprint. So really neat tool and I think something that can come in quite handy either to detect intrusions or also sort of in a network forensics capability. Take a look at it if you have run into the problem that you tried to figure out what particular network connection was established by what process on Windows. And yes, there are other tools that can just uh, detect the connection or like, you know, Sysmon just by itself can report it. But uh, really the power here is that by feeding it all back to Seek, you first of all can now scale it much better. And you can also correlate these system events better with network events. And Symantec came across some interesting crypto jacking apps in Microsoft's own store. Now we don't hear a lot about Microsoft's store probably because it doesn't have sort of the market penetration that uh, for example, the Google Play Store has. But yes, it's interesting enough for the bad guys to use for crypto jacking. Another sort of interesting twist here was that the crypto jacking JavaScript wasn't included directly in Instead, the Google Tag Manager was used. It's usually actually used to inject like ad codes and the like into applications, into web pages to sort of make the management a little bit easier. But well, as this case proves, it can be used to inject arbitrary JavaScript. And in this case, it was used to inject the crypto jacking JavaScript into the running app. Now, what wasn't really all that different was the type of applications that were used to inject the malicious JavaScript for example, again, VPN applications, battery optimizers, that's always a good one. And then applications to download videos from YouTube and some odd browsers uh, were being used to inject this script. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.